it's a bis goth. There, 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 there. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so pleased you're here. It's been such a long time since I've been this side of the camera like this. If you haven't watched the Kitchen Live videos, go and find the link to the playlist up here and um, go and have a bit of a Kitchen Live fest. But for you today, I have the most incredible and the simplest bundt cake ever. It's a Biscoff bundt cake and it's spicy and warm and caramelly and cinnamony and it works any time of year. We're in our middle of our summer at the moment and it's great. It just, it disappeared in minutes flat. <laughs> So you can do this whenever you like. It would be perfect as well for fall with some nice warming cinnamony spiced cream or some apples or just whatever. It's perfect on its own as well with a good cup of tea. So let's get to it. So here we go guys, this is the best bunt. So we're gonna use a seven inch bunt pan I picked this up in Aldi a few years ago, but you can get these ones on Amazon. It's just really simple for an afternoon tea, but you can get more intricate ones from Nordic Wear. Whichever design you go for, you're going to want to make sure you grease it really well. I'm using a cake release spray. Just make sure you get it in all those nuts and crannies. And maybe give it a smooth over with a silicon pastry brush. First up then, we're going to crush our Biscoff cookies or speckles. We want about 10 of those and we're going to use a mini chopper. So break them into pieces. Pop the top on and give them, give them a whiz up. You want to make sure that they're a fine sandy crumb. Perfect. So next you want a very large mixing bowl and we're going to add our dry ingredients. Starting with all purpose or plain flour. We're going to add two sugars. We're going to start with a white caster sugar or super fine and then we're going to follow it with a soft, light brown sugar. Make sure they're all in. And to give it some lift, some baking powder. And now our crushed Biscoff biscuits, in they go. Make sure they're all in there. Give that a mix through, make sure it's really well combined with a rubber spatula. So first off, we're gonna take half of our Biscoff spread and add it to our dry ingredients. The other half we're gonna use for our glaze later. And then we want some softened butter. It needs to be really soft so we can start mixing it well together. I take mine out the fridge the night before. With a handheld mixer, mix everything together until you get a thick sandy crumb. Next up, you want three medium fresh eggs. Make sure these are at room temperature. And again, with a handheld mixer, give these a whiz until you've got a smooth, thick and creamy batter. If it's really thick, add a tablespoon of full fat milk and mix it again. Get to fold everything in make sure you've got it all there next up you need to pop your cake batter into your greased bundt pan i use a spatula with mine 
get it all the way round. And then with the back of a spoon, level everything off and make sure it's all in nicely. Next, place the cake in a preheated oven at 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit for about 45 to 50 minutes. So to make our glaze, I'm adding just pure Biscoff spread into a small saucepan and I'm going to melt this over a very low gentle heat. I don't have a microwave, but you can do yours in the microwave instead. When your cake is fully cool, pop it on a cake stand. And with your melted Biscoff glaze, drizzle it over the top. See, simple. With a couple of spare Biscoff biscuits, crumble these over the top. And there you have it, Biscoff Bundt Cake. Perfect any time of the year. So there you have it, the simplest and most delicious Biscoff Bundt Cake you can ever make. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to prep everything and get it into the oven. And then the glaze is just seconds in the microwave. If you haven't got microwave like I have, you can do it over a, just a really low, gentle heat on the stove. The cake itself will keep fresh for about three days. If it lasts that long, you need to keep it in an airtight container at room temperature. You can also freeze it. If you wrap it really well in cling film before you put that glaze on and pop it in the freezer, it'll last about one to two months. Just make sure it's thoroughly defrosted before you eat it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Don't forget, you can find the link to the recipe on the blog and I'll pop that down below in the comments. If you've got any questions, please let me know. If you've liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell and you'll get notifications next time I post a new video. And I'll be doing more kitchen live sessions around uh, Halloween, getting ready for autumn. So you'll be notified about those as well. We've got some great recipes coming up. In the meantime, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're safe and well, and I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye for now.